in today's session we will be seeing about carrier current protection of transmission lines so this comes under the pilot relaying scheme now here it if you could see it is mainly used for the protection of your ehv and uhv lines extra high voltage and your ultra high voltage lines now if you could see here the speciality is that whatever is a power line that has to be protected the same signal is going to be used as a transmission of signals for the carrier wave okay so we are going to use the same high voltage line as a means to send the carrier signal for protecting the power system components if you could see here the frequency range which is used is as high as 50 kilohertz to 700 kilohertz okay so why what is the reason why we have to choose this range it is because below this range if i am going to use the size and the cost of the coupling equipment becomes high whatever the coupling equipments i am going to use it becomes higher so whereas above this range if you could see there is a considerable transmission loss and signal attenuation okay so the transmission loss which is going to be incurred is considerable okay and the signal attenuation which is a important factor in your carrier wave it is attenuation is also less is quite considerable right now if we are going to move on to this carrier current protection scheme here two operating schemes are there here if you could see one is your carrier blocking scheme another is your carrier intertripping scheme so if you see this carrier blocking scheme it is nothing but if my carrier signal is going to prevent the operation of the relay it is going to prevent the tripping if i am going to use a carrier signal for tripping the operation of the relay then it is called as your carrier blocking scheme okay whereas whenever i say it as a carrier intertripping scheme it is nothing but if i want to initiate the tripping okay i want that particular section to be isolated in case of a fault in that case i will go in for this carrier intertripping scheme right now this carrier intertripping scheme the other names for it are transfer tripping and permissive tripping okay so the carrier intertripping scheme means from the name itself it should be clear that if it is going to initiate the tripping of the relay then it is called as your carrier intertripping scheme now we will move on to the what is the advantage why we have to go in for the carrier current protection okay if you could see so this means to be a fast and superior method when compared to the distance schemes you know there are three distance schemes mainly the impedance relay reactance relay and your more relay okay wherein if you want you can also use these relays for a three stepped distance protection okay so if you consider this distance protection it is going to be a non unit protection okay whereas in case of your carrier current protection so here the discrimination is going to be absolute it is going to detect only the fault within its own zone thus it falls under your unit protection if you could see the carrier current protection the power level what it is used is only 10 to 20 watts okay now moving on to the what is the disadvantage of the earlier scheme and what is the necessity for us to go for the carrier current protection scheme right now if you see the disadvantage of your time stepped protection is that so here the circuit breakers which is going to be at two ends of the line they are not going to be opened or tripped at the same moment okay here it leads to the non simultaneous tripping or opening of your circuit breaker so if circuit breaker is not going to be opened at the same time means what will happen in case of my circuit breaker i will have a fixed contact and a moving contact okay it is not just like that you are owning the switch of a fan or a light it is your real time power system the high voltage is going to be carried in your lines so whenever there is going to be a fault 
and the moving contact is going to move apart from your fixed contact in a circuit breaker the main problem is that immediately the line is not going to be isolated in case of a fault why because there is going to be a problem called as arcing because it is going to be opened under very high voltage or in other words it is going to be opened under a very high magnitude of the current the current will still flow and it will act as a short circuit if this is going to act as a short circuit what will happen so you will it will damage the components to which your transmission line is connected okay so only depending upon the arc quenching medium you will be having different types of circuit breaker suppose if i am going to say it as oil circuit breaker then oil will be used for quenching the arc as soon as possible now if you are going to see this because of this non simultaneous opening of your circuit breaker here whenever the whenever it is going to be opened under your uh, high magnitudes of your uh, uh, power parameters what happens here this deionization of the gases will be there okay the arc has to go what happens so this arc has to quench because whatever the uh, liquid suppose if i am going to take it as oil circuit breaker this liquid will go and quench the arc when it is quenching, quenching the arc what will happen so the liquid will be converted to vapors so whenever it is going to be converted to vapors what happens the carbon dust particles will get deposited in the oil itself so only you say this oil circuit breakers need maintenance okay that is on one side of your circuit breaker whereas when you compare with your carrier current protection what happens so here you have the deionization of the gases so this should be properly quenched as soon as possible else because of the flow of the electrons there will be a conduction flow okay due to the deionization of the gases which can lead to a further short circuit to your equipments now if you could see the main disadvantages of this non simultaneous opening of your circuit breaker gets cleared in case of your carrier current protection you are going to trip at both the ends of the line so that is the advantage that is the necessity we go in for your carrier current protection moreover for a long transmission line to be protected this carrier current protection proves to be a advantageous one now if you could see there are two techniques of operating this carrier current protection scheme now if you could see in this carrier current protection scheme you have two types one is your directional comparison scheme the other one is your phase comparison scheme if you could see in case of the directional comparison scheme here if at all there is going to be a fault if a fault occurs within its own zone it is called as a internal fault okay if the device is able to detect the fault within its own zone it is called as a unit protection right so if a fault occurs internal fault the current will flow towards the relay from both the ends of the transmission line but whereas in case of the normal condition or in case of the external fault where the relay should not operate in this condition the current will flow from one end and it will flow out flow in through one end and it will flow out through the other end now we will move on to your phase comparison scheme from the name itself it is clear that we are going to compare the phase of or magnitude of the current which is entering and leaving okay so now if you could see the in phase comparison scheme in case of the normal condition in external fault the current at entering in at the uh, and at the sending end if you could see both the currents are will be in same phase with each other whereas whenever i am going to consider a fault when it is occurring so the phase of the current will differ so they are going to be 180 degree out of phase with each other now in this case this phase comparison scheme it is going to act as a blocking pilot okay so with this i conclude today's session where you have seen the introduction of the carrier current protection in the next session we will be seeing about the working of your phase comparison scheme of carrier current protection thank you